Das Energy by Paul Williams, page 60. To be born is to become totally vulnerable and open to abandon all security in exchange for life. We must not fear to be born anew every moment. Babies are high all the time. They assume nothing. They draw no lines. They are completely open to pain and joy. Babies see things as they really are. Children are high a lot of the time. They are more open than adults, make fewer assumptions, allow more things to happen to them. They seem to have infinite energy. But do not think adults are fallen angels. It is not possible to fall from grace. Adults have access to infinite energy. They can free themselves from assumptions. They can be as high as they choose, but they cannot escape responsibility. And if you don't embrace your responsibility, love it as you love yourself, you will never get high. You will never enjoy free energy flow. What is responsibility? Ah, might as well ask, what is self? It's your responsibility and yourself, and no book and no person can tell you anything about it. Don't try to find out what your responsibility is. It isn't a what, it's a relationship. It isn't something you know, it's something you do. Try to get closer to it. Try to become more yourself. Don't try to find out who you are. We can talk about our responsibility if you like. We, in this case, are women and men. This book is written for women and men. It isn't written for or by God. At the moment you become fully aware of your Godhood, this book is irrelevant. Our responsibility is to find our place in the flow of life on this planet. We must cease all action that is counter to the flow of life. We must cease all inaction that is counter to the flow of life. Some of these actions and inactions are already obvious to us. So let us start now. Let every individual reading these words remove himself from all participation in any activity that is detrimental to the flow of life. Let every individual reading these words undertake every activity that it is necessary for her to do in order that the harmony of the life flow be preserved. We must cease all action that is counter to the flow of life. We must cease all inaction that is counter to the flow of life. Many of these actions and inactions are not yet obvious to us. They will become obvious as we raise our level of awareness. So let us start now. When we reach total awareness, self-awareness, we will have found our place in the flow of life on this planet. When we find our place in the flow of life on this planet, we will be totally aware. It will no longer be possible for any individual to be out of harmony with all life. It will be no more possible than it is possible not to breathe. When we, the human race, reach total awareness, an even more incredible thing will happen. All life on this planet will become totally aware. We will all wake up together. Then there will be one creature, newly born, alone and full of pain and joy, and that creature will see things as they really are and will be high all the time until it grows up. Do not be afraid to love. Do not be afraid to love men, women, the very young, the very old, animals, plants, sudden acquaintances, lifelong friends, your children, your parents, strangers, yourself. 
Love is affirmation. You are God. Give us your blessing. Let yourself be blessed. Listen to no one who tells you how to love. Your love is like no other, and that is what makes it beautiful. Yourself is your divinity. Express yourself. Sooner or later, a person begins to notice that everything that happens to her is perfect, relates directly to who she is, had to happen, was meant to happen, plays its little role in fulfilling her destiny. When she encounters difficulty, it no longer occurs to her to complain. She has learned to expect nothing, has learned that loss and frustration are a part of life and come at their proper time. Instead, she asks herself, why is this happening? By which she means, what can I learn from this? How will it strengthen me, make me more aware? She lets herself be strengthened, lets herself grow, just as she lets herself relax and enjoy and grow when life is gentle to her. Strengthened by this simple notion, simple awareness, that life is perfect, that all things come at the proper moment, and that she is always the perfect person for the situation she finds herself in, a person begins to feel more and more in tune with her inner nature, begins to find it easier and easier to do what she knows is right. All chance events appear to her to be intended. All intentional actions she clearly perceives as part of the workings of chance. Anxiety seldom troubles her. She knows her death will come at its proper moment. She knows her actions are right, and therefore whatever comes to pass as a result of them will be what is meant to happen. When she does feel anxiety, she realizes it is because of that thing she's been meaning to do but hasn't done. Some unfulfilled relationship she's been aware of, but... She perceives the anxiety as a message that she'll have to stop hesitating if she wants to stay high. She knows that she's out of tune because she's let herself get out of tune. And because she knows she can, she begins to take action. She enjoys her high life, does not enjoy anxiety, so she stops hesitating and does what she has to do. She does not live in a state of bliss, though perhaps she feels herself moving toward one or toward something. She doesn't know what it is, but it is the way she has to go. The journey towards it is the only life she enjoys. It is hard. It is exciting. It is satisfying, lonely, joyous, frustrating, puzzling, enlightening, real. It is her life. That's all. She accepts it. Sooner or later, a person begins to notice. The affirmation of one's own life, the acceptance of one's destiny as it manifests itself in each moment is the supreme act of faith. It's incredibly fucking easy. It's a hell of a commitment. Nothing is more important than doing what is right. That is so absurdly obvious that most people pay no attention to it. Most people seem to think that what is obvious is beneath them. They pass up truth in favor of something more intellectually stimulating. It is never difficult to feel what's right. Sometimes, perhaps, there seems to be conflict between two things to do that both feel right. When this happens to you, accept it as a message that you are not in tune with yourself. Do not try to make a decision. Relax and allow your feelings to take over. You are a precision instrument and you can always feel what's right. Don't fight it. Relax. Do it. Decision-making is a vice. Some addicts 
reach a stage where they do almost nothing but agonize over decisions. It's a subtle form of hesitation. Like all addictions, the only cure is cold turkey. You could spend the rest of your life trying to decide whether to take the cure. All morality must be based on inner truth. Any morality that goes against inner awareness is immoral. Don't ever think you know what's right for the other person. He might start thinking he knows what's right for you. Two people do not have to agree on what's right to be together. They just have to want to be together. If that sounds simple, try it sometime. We are afraid of committing ourselves and we are afraid of letting go. To make a commitment is the creative, which is the realm of heaven. To let go is the receptive, which is the realm of earth. So we extend our lives into either of these realms of perfection, though we could easily inhabit both. Our fears interfere and we remain in purgatory. Yet, how little effort it would take to let go of our meaningless activities and commit our energies to overcoming this fear and attaining heaven and earth. Pay attention. That's always good advice. It's amazing how much frustration can be avoided and how much joy and awareness gained just by paying attention to yourself and the people and the world around you, wherever you may be. It's the greatest show on earth, and it's happening right here, right now. The present is always more interesting than the future or the past. The only way to enjoy the show, to enjoy life, is as a participant. Perhaps it's the people who think they are spectators who spread the ideas that all pleasures must be paid for. Don't pay for anything. Life is free.